Hello and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast. This episode is all about dyeing with the avocado. I love dyeing with the avocado. It's one of my favorite fruits to dye with. And one of the reasons for that is because it's so efficient. All you need is the pit and the skin and you can get some great colors. In this episode, I'm going to talk about what we need in order to get great colors. And I'll also give you some tips as well. So let's get going. So what you'll need are some pots. And the pots that I use are pots that I do not use for anything else other than natural dyeing. So I've got some pots ready and then you'll also need some water. And so we'll talk about that in a minute, but you've got a water source and then you need an avocado, a bunch of avocados. I'll talk about how many we need. Um, you need some gloves, you need some yarn, and sometimes you can get a, use a sifter as well if you want to separate the pits and the skins from your yarn. And you probably need a spoon and some tongs to pull the yarn out. So let's get going. So the avocado that we're going to use is a Haas avocado. There's over 500 varieties of avocado around the world, but the Haas avocado coming from California um, is one that most people are familiar with because 95% of all the avocados that we use in North America are Haas avocados. So let's get going. We need some water and the water that I have is well water. Now water is really important uh, when you're dying with avocado because it really impacts the, the color or, the, or the, the tone that you're getting or the shade that you're getting out of the, out of the avocado. And so, for example, if I were to dye yarn in Toronto using avocados and, or at the cabin, I would get a different color. It would be similar but not exactly the same. And that's because the water that I'm using from the city is different from my well water. It's got a different chemical composition in it. And so the, the chemicals in it impact it, the pH level impacts it. And so today what I thought I would do is, it's, it's winter time in Canada, and I die with snow a lot in, in the winter time because my rain barrels are all frozen, so I can't die with those. Um, so what we'll do today is we'll use my well water, and then we'll use snow in order to see whether or not there's any variance in color. So this pot has the well water in it, and I fill up the pot, basically, I leave about a, an inch from the lip. And this one is going to have snow in it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add um, a, a fair amount of... I'm going to fill it up the, basically to the about an inch to the, to the rim. So I've got the snow and I'm putting that in here. It takes, um, it takes a lot of snow. One of the questions I always get is, how many avocados does it take to dye yarn? And so the question or the answer is it depends, but I will give you a benchmark. The benchmark that I use is anywhere from 50% uh, of the weight of the yarn to 100%, so one to one. So if, my, if I'm dyeing 500 grams of yarn, I will go anywhere from uh, 250 grams to 500 grams of avocado and that's the pit and the skin combined. The reason I say it, dep it depends is because not all avocados are created equally. And so I'm using, if I'm using the Haas avocado, they grow in California, in Mexico, in Peru, and it really depends on where it's coming from in the time of season. Uh, those could all have uh, impacts on, on the color. But one of the tips I'm gonna give you for a, a clear color when you're dying with avocado is to make sure that you take all of the green meat off of the pit. And make sure you do that for the skin, inside the skin, scoop it all out, wash it out, and on the pit. Because what that can do is that can cloud your color and it can make it um, dull. And we want to get a, I want to get at least a, a crisp color when I'm dying with avocado. So that's, that's tip number one. So what I'll do in this one is, in, in a large pot, the other benchmark you can, you can use is if you're using a big pot, you can um, put in roughly eight skins and pits. Uh, this is a medium size, so I'll probably put anywhere from four to six pits in, in, in this pot. So you've got two benchmarks. You can either use go by the weight or you can go by the size of the, size of the pot. Um, and the other thing is check on it. I'm gonna be checking on this throughout the day to see if I like the color and if the color is working for me. If it's too weak, I might add some more 
uh, avocado skins if it's just right I'll just I'll just leave it so um, so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it throughout the day so here's some of the avocados that I'm gonna be putting in in my dye pot and so what I like to do is after I finish an avocado I will uh, clean it out and then I'll put it in the freezer I've got a bag in the freezer and I just I, um, keep them in there and they keep quite well they store uh, quite well so you want to make sure that you get it out of the uh, like I don't leave it out because it, what will happen is mold will will grow on it so I put it right away into the freezer the other thing you can do is you can ask your friends if you've got friends who eat avocados you can ask them to save the pits and the skins just ask them to after they're finished with it rather than throwing it in the compost uh, just put it in a bag and put it in your freezer and, and then you'll swing by and pick it up the other thing you can do is you can go to your local restaurant that has avocado on the menu or a Mexican restaurant and ask them for their pits and their avocado skins. And what you're doing is you're giving that a second life. And uh, so they're helping to contribute to the adding color to, to yarn. And so the, I do that as well. So I'm never running out of options for avocado because avocados are expensive. So if you can get them from friends or restaurants, you're definitely saving there. Okay, the snow has melted, and what I'm going to do now is add the avocado. And I'm going to mix it in between. I'm going to put pits in and skins in. And I'm, put, I'm going to put in six in this one. Two, four, six. And I'll do the same with this one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let it simmer for a couple of hours. I'll come and check on it. And what I'll probably do is I'll turn off the heat after two to three hours and then let it sit overnight. I've let the dye pots sit overnight. And so let's take a look and see what the color looks like. The first one is the dye pot that had the well water in it. It almost looks like wine. And here is the snow. No, oh, it's a little darker for sure. So if you hold them up. This has been simmering overnight and we're ready to take the skin and the pits out. What will happen is sometimes the pit will, you'll get skin that will come off of the pit. And so I like to, dry, I like to strain it. And I don't reuse these because they're they're ready for composting now. They're not really they're, I've extracted all the tannin out of it, so it's not really great for dyeing anymore. with the snow. I'm going to turn the element back on and we do not want to boil this because if we boil it um, what will happen is 
when I put the yarn in, it's going to shock the yarn, and then when you have heat, a heat source and fiber, you're going to start to get felting. So what I like to do is, this is room temperature, and I've got my wet yarn ready. I'm going to take my wet yarn out, and I'm going to put it in the dye bath right now. The other thing to keep in mind is it's really important to have your fiber wet because that opens up the fiber and it's ready to take color. If you put it in and it's dry, it's just not going to take the color the, 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 way, it, the, way, it, the way it can, so we want to maximize that um, uh, color absorption. So I'm going to put this in. This pot is the pot that we used for, uh, that came out with my well water, and it was the lighter of, of the two. Put another skein in for now. And then I'll put in, this is the dye pot that had the snow. So I'll put a skein in here. I've got two skeins in here. And I'm going to turn up the heat to simmer. And I'll check on it. And for me, another tip that I wanted to share is slow and steady wins the race. At least that's been my experience with avocado. I, I don't ever want to rush the process and what I'll probably do is let this simmer for a couple of hours and then I'll come back and check on it and look at the color and if the color isn't dark enough for me or rich enough what I'll do is I'll just let it sit in longer and I've many times what I'll do is I'll let it sit in overnight so we'll check on it and see and see what it looks like it's been just over two hours now we're going to check to see whether or not the yarn is ready to come out That's a nice color. I like that. So this one is definitely ready. This was the yarn that I used with water coming from my well. Let's check the other one. So this one is snow. That's quite nice as well. See how it's got it? It's, it's darker than this one. So they're both ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out. I'm going to wash them and then um, We'll have another look and see see the difference. I would, do want to say when you're washing the yarn afterwards, like after you take the yarn out and you put it in water, make sure that the water is similar in temperature to the water in the dye bath because you don't want to shock the yarn. And you don't want to agitate either because agitating the yarn with heat again causes it to felt and we don't want that. So... And what I'll often do is I'll just squeeze the yarn gently when it's in here and I'll put the excess liquid back into the dye pot because I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to wash this yarn now. Okay, I've washed the yarn and I wanted to show you the difference between the yarn that was in the dye bath with snow versus the yarn that was in with the well water. So this is the well water and this is the snow. You notice that the snow is much darker than the, the well water and that was it. Like It was the exact same ingredients, um, same temperature, and it was just the, the water or the, the liquid that I used uh, that caused the difference in color. The reason I wanted to do that was just wanted to show you how temperamental the, the variables are, um, especially the water when you take that into consideration when you're dyeing your yarn. And again, with, with water, it is the chemicals, chemical composition, and it's also the pH balance. Before we go, I wanted to show you one other thing. And that is putting your yarn in an after bath of iron to see if that will do anything to the color. We're going to try to shift the color a little bit. So I'm going to put this in and I've got the pot 
the pot is roughly it's 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 basically um, almost full to the top of water and I put a tiny tiny bit of iron in it so I would say a tablespoon at the most anywhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon and one more thing before I put it in just to go over the concoction again of the of the iron bath so what I do is I take my mason jar fill it up two-thirds with water and one-third with vinegar throw some old nails in it let it sit around for about a month and then I can use that as uh, to, put, to create an iron bath. So let's put this in. So this is what it looks like going in. This was the one that came from the well water. Put that in. It immediately darkens. Iron traditionally saddens a color, but it also changes it and makes it darker. So if we take the original you can see that there's a, quite a difference. And what will happen is the iron will continue to activate in, in the yarn until I thoroughly wash it. So that's basically it. Dine with avocados. Pretty simple. And you get some great colors. So this was the well water. This one was the snow. And this one was the iron. The last one was the iron. And so you can get, they're quite, quite different in color. So just to go over it again, we used the pit of the avocado and the skin, and we used pretty much the same weight as a dried yarn. So if we had yarn that was 500 grams, we'd be using 500 grams of avocado. If you don't have a scale around, then you, with, a, with a big pot, you just throw in eight pits and skins. Uh, so a total of eight, so four and four, or any combination of thereof. We apply it to heat, and we let it simmer for two hours. And then you can let it, if you like the color of it, you can go ahead. If not, you can let it sit overnight or as long as you want. Then we get our wet yarn and we put our wet yarn in and let that sit for at least two hours and then take a look at it. And if we like the color, we'll take it out. Um, some of the tips that I shared as well, really look at the water that you're using. Use different types of water. If you've got access to snow, that's fantastic. Use that. If you have access to salt water, if you have access to well water, tap water, uh, city water, anything, uh, but mix it up and, and you'll really get to play with the with uh, the color in, in your fiber. Make sure that you clean out the avocado thoroughly as well because that can really have an impact on your color. And then you can add iron if you want to or you can add sodium bicarbonate. Um, it just, again, it, it, it allows you to play around with the color. I love dyeing with avocado and I'm gonna, I do a lot of it so I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'd uh, love to hear your comments on it as well. If there's anything else you want me to see dying, uh, just let me know and I'm happy to do it. I've got tons of stuff uh, around the cabin to, to die with. So take care everyone and have a good week. Mm -hmm.